In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Mother of perpetual help, grant that I may ever invoke your powerful name, the protection of the living and the salvation of the dying. Purest Mary, let your name henceforth be ever on my lips. Delay not, blessed lady, to rescue me whenever I call on you. In my temptations, in my needs, I will never cease to call on you, ever repeating your sacred name, Mary, Mary. What a consolation, what sweetness, what confidence fills my soul when I utter your sacred name, or even only think of you. I thank the Lord for having given you so sweet, so powerful, so lovely a name, but I will not be content with merely uttering your name. Let my love for you prompt me ever to hail you, Mother of perpetual help, Mother of perpetual help, pray for me and grant me the favors I confidently ask of you. O Mother of perpetual help, through your grace and intercession, we ask for your assistance for an end of the coronavirus pandemic, for the continual growth of holiness in our parish, an increase in our daily lives of the fire of our Catholic faith, for the needs and intentions of our parish, for the intentions of those for whom the candle before your image is burning this week, and for the intentions that we hold now in the silence of our hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, our Father and Protector. Saint Elizabeth Ann Seaton, our Holy Patron. Saint Hannibal Maria de Franca and Saint Justin Martyr. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The disciples devoted themselves with one accord to prayer with Mary, the mother of Jesus. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, before we enter into these most sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and we ask God for his pardon and his peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also, grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day, and exulting in the holiness of her children, may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All of these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. The gospel. 
If my mother said one thing to me consistently while I was growing up, it was that she loved me. She said it all the time. But she would set aside special moments, I think, for her, because I didn't get it, where she would look at me and say, Richard, you will never know how much I love you until you have children of your own. Oh, I don't know if your mother has ever said, anybody's mother ever say that to them? Okay, one. Well, if there were ten more people here, maybe two would have heard it. Uh, to me, to me, that was, that's a way of saying the deepest love can't be described. It can only be experienced. And that may be true, I don't know, but in recent years, uh, scientists have begun to, to try and plumb the depths of, of that love in, in my discipline in, in psych psychology. For example, a recent study took a group of mothers and showed them pictures of distressing moments in anonymous people's lives. These were people that they didn't know in the photographs. But they asked the women, they asked the mothers to imagine themselves being that person and feeling what that person felt during that duress. And then they took some neurological measurements. And then they asked the mothers to imagine their children going through that distress. And they took some measurements. And for the majority of the women, there was almost no distinction between the two neural patterns. In other words, when you ask those women to imagine themselves going through it, it was no different than imagining the child going through it. They were so in union with their children's feelings. In light of this, I'd like to pause and reflect on this scene in the Gospel reading today. Notice the evangelist John. Unlike all the other evangelists, the Synoptic Gospels do not do this. Only John places Mary by the cross, standing at the cross. You can look it up. Matthew, Mark, Luke, all the women are at a distance. They see the cross at a distance. Not John. Mary is right there with him. So imagine the duress of that scene. And imagine yourself watching your child go through this. Imagine what you would feel. But above that, imagine the steadfast faithfulness of this woman. In the first reading, what did we hear? We heard that the apostles were gathered in the upper room and Joshua read all of the names. Well, where were they by the cross? Where were they? Only his mother was standing by his cross. John notes her first before Mary, the wife of Clopas, or Mary of Magdalene. Mary, his mother, stood there. The faithful disciple. And that's the point. Her life was lived as a testament not just to her motherhood, but to her faithfulness as a disciple. She was his mother, but she was his disciple first. Her life was a testament to that advice given in John. The only other time John mentions her, several chapters before in Cana. And what does she say? Her last words in Scripture. What are they? Do whatever he tells you. That's how she lived her life. And knowing this, her son gives his mother more to do. He's on the cross in this scene. What does John say? When Jesus saw his mother, he saw her, and he speaks to her 
first. Not to the beloved disciple, not to anyone else. He speaks to her first. And not only does he speak to her, but he now expands her role as if she could be greater than the mother of Christ. He now expands her role to mother of the disciples of Christ. In other words, mother of the body. In the words of the theologian, Father Raymond Brown, this is Christ's last willed act of empowerment that reveals and makes come about a new relationship. And what is that? Mary, now as mother of not only the head, but of the body. Christ as the head of the church, the disciples as the mystical body of Christ. And under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the church proclaims every year on Good Friday, at least from ancient times, that the church was born from the wounded side of Christ as he slept the sleep of death upon the cross. Mary understood this, and as in all things, she obeyed her Lord. That is why, in the first reading, she is mentioned with the disciples in the upper room at prayer. Mary has the most marvelous intercessory role. She is the obedient daughter of the Father. She is the mother of his only Son. And she is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Who better to intercede for us than this woman who has such an intimate relationship with each person of the Trinity? Someone said years ago that the word mother really isn't a noun. It's a verb. So today, on the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, consider how Mary's role from the beginning has been to mother people into the Church by being a model of prayer, discipleship, and unconditional love, and operating on the principle that we will never know how much our mother loves us until we have children of our own. Let us not forget that her model of motherhood is meant to be imitated. We too are called to mother people into the church. And if we don't know how to do that, we can start learning from Mary. She gives us the rosary, for example. Consider the joyful mysteries alone. What do we learn when we contemplate the joyful mysteries? Humility, love of neighbor, poverty of spirit, obedience, piety. That's just the joyful mysteries. Every major event in her life is a decade of the rosary. Every pivotal moment is a mystery. Every mystery has its own fruit, and every fruit is centered on Christ, and that is the key. Mary teaches us through the rosary what she teaches through her life, and that is that bringing people to the church is nothing more or less than bringing them to Christ and allowing him to stir within them the flame of divine love, which truly cannot be described, but only experienced, and in which we are truly one. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray Thank for us. us. Please stand. Gathering our prayers and our petitions, we place them before our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Mother. For our clergy, our Holy Father, bishops, priests, and deacons, as they face the trials and challenges of our time, that our Blessed Mother may share with them the profound trust for which she has been called blessed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace, that we may learn to have the same attitude toward all, putting away ambitious thoughts and taking our place with Mary among God's lowly ones, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may make us fervent and humble, that we may never be sent away empty with the rich or cast down from our place with the mighty, but find joy in our God who saves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick among us, the poor, the imprisoned, the addicted, all who have special need of prayer, that Mary, at prayer with the apostles in the upper room, may mediate Christ's loving kindness to all their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died and are still awaiting the blessed vision of their hope, that Mother Mary may visit them with the gift of entrance into the joy of their heavenly home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the holy souls in purgatory whom we remember at this holy mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are our prayers and our petitions. Father God, we lay them on the altar of Mary's Immaculate Heart. We unite them this day with the prayers of St. Justin Martyr, St. Hannibal Maria del Franca, the prayers of all the holy women at the foot of the cross. And we ask them of you as always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with due praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb, and giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the Church. Standing beside the cross, she received the testament of divine love and took to herself as sons and daughters all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, 
She joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples, and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church's homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved and healed.
Now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray together our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the Blessed Virgin's motherly help, your Church may teach all nations by proclaiming the Gospel, and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God.